What's up, guys? Uh, Savannah and Ryan here from Mystery of Western Art. How's it going? And uh, the 9 o'clock class. So I, I need to sleep for this more and more. Anyways, top countdown. Um, number four, Saturn devouring his son, Francisco Goya, 1819 to 1823. Yikes, look at that and, face. Yeah, that's, that's quite disturbing. I, um, but Francisco Goya painted this as per the obvious template behind there. And, um, but the story is that Saturn was the uh, Roman god of time and he got the prediction or somebody gave him the prophecy that one of his kids was going to kill him. So he decided to start eating them to prevent that from happening. But one of them did escape and wound up killing him anyway. Right. So, but here he's just frantically and almost yeah. desperately. He, se he sealed his own fate so quickly. Um, but uh, yeah, he's, I mean, look at that face. They, nobody wants to eat their children. Of course, he's terrified. He's afraid. Mm -hmm. He's. But he, he has to do it. He, he thinks he has to do it. And uh, I guess because he doesn't want to be overthrown. That's a little. He's got some sadness shame. in his eyes from there. But he's tearing off his own son's arm. I mean, who wouldn't? I don't. I don't know about. Who wouldn't? I don't think. <laughs> well, <laughs> more or less. You know what? Like, I, I kind of want to put some dubstep for this. Okay. Well, that worked. I mean, well, quite I did, fitting, wasn't it? I didn't need to sleep tonight. But, uh, yeah, the, he looks like he's kind of decaying there a little bit, too, it's with his elbow, ghostly. his legs. It's, it, his eyes are just... Man, that is disturbing. Looks I mean, like that it... scene from The Godfather. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, number three. All right, well, we got Athena and Centaur here, created by Botticelli in 1482. Now, isn't this a lovely contrast to your Saturn eating his son? This, I mean, look at what's going on here. This is very much better, isn't very it? much more peaceful. I mean, look at Athena here. Um, she's actually grasping the centaur's hair, holding him back. Um, actually, what the centaur represents is lust and an animalistic type human urge to satisfy. A half um, man, half horse represents yeah. some sexual term or okay exactly well <laughs> and sexual, um, sexuality there yes and this was actually created for the medici family and commissioned by the medici family um for one of their weddings in the family so um this was supposed to be his athena was supposed to be his bride actually taming the groom because um i guess he had a reputation of being a little um, playboy back in the day. Oh, rough so, in the sack, eh? Exactly. That's what this was all about. But I mean, if you just look at her face, she is very, um, almost just angelic-like, and she's calm. She's she represents a virgin, and he is quite the opposite. Um, look at her dress. Well, actually, yeah. that's kind of a provocative dress. If you <laughs> very see-through. It is a little bit, but I think the white also represents purity, <laughs> and also that she can show off as much without having any shame. I mean, he just looks so disappointed right there. He is. She, He's not happy. She looks like she, or he. He looks like said he just got friend zoned or divorced, brother zoned. Or less, exactly. Um, but ouch! If, I feel your pain, sir. Uh, well, if you look at her face, I mean, it kind of looks. A little, a little bit, bit like, like uh, uh, our next one. Yes, Birth of Venus. There yeah. you go. She, she does look a little bit like Venus here. I mean, look at that. Yeah. It, it's was, very, it looks very similar. It is. And created only a couple years later in 1846. I mean, here's beautiful Venus. She's floating in on her seashell. Um, she's got the angels blowing her in. and Sort of like Aquaman Beta. I mean, sure. And look I will at call the seashell to ride in on shore. Right. Uh, look at the flowers kind She's of floating around. All the around. flowers just falling down. She's a little nude herself, she but... She knows how to make an entrance right back without a dress and with flowers. That is the way to do it. I that is so. more part more parte there. <laughs> well, there you go. And I guess and nudity did represent innocence, um, not like it does today. Um, but look at her long hair. She's kind of covering herself, which is very peaceful. Her neck's just a tad bit long, but he nailed it pretty well with the body and stuff. I, it was, it was I good. believe so. Look at all the ornate just, yeah. um, description. Moving or... on. Uh, number one, Perseus with the head of Medusa. Antonio Canova, 1757 to uh, 1822. Job, I mean, that took, a, that took a while, but uh, totally worth it. I mean, wow. look at that. I mean, Look at his that abs are literally chiseled. I'd say and, so. And uh, most of, 
most people should know this story, but uh, yeah, Perseus was a demigod and he was living in Argos at the time uh, until Hades came in and said, you know, sacrifice your princess to the Kraken or your city will be destroyed by the Kraken, and, which was a horrible, horrifying beast. It was huge and big and scary. And uh, scary. so Perseus decided to go and get Medusa's head there because legend has it, anybody who looks Medusa in the eyes turns, turns to, stone. to stone. So he went with his, uh, his posse and some of them turned to stone. But he got the head, he came back, he showed it to the Kraken, and of course the Kraken just broke apart, literally. Right. <laughs> And uh, save the day for Argos and Princess Andromeda. Mm -hmm. um, Look at but that it's face. incredible detail there yeah. with uh, all of that. And, and that took a while, but it was totally worth it. And um, absolutely. That, no, what's on his head? A helmet. The guides gave him a helmet, a sword, and shield with for wings? his journeys. Yeah. The helmet has yeah. wings. Yeah, just about. Okay. Anyways, but uh, that's all there is to tell about that. Goodbye. Bye, guys.